Hello friends, welcome back to this session on number system. Now today in this uh, video we are going to learn representing rational numbers on a number line. Hope you remember now what rational numbers are. If you don't know or don't remember you can go back and watch the previous session. So just to give you a quick recap, a rational number uh, is of the form of p by q where p and q are integers are integers and in many literature you will see this written as p comma q and this greek letter epsilon belongs to z right this is a mathematical way of writing p and q are integers p and q this notation means belongs to belongs to z Z means set of set of integers right so p and q belongs to set of integers okay so and then second this was criteria number one criteria number two was q is not equal to zero the denominator cannot be zero and three was that gcd of p and q that means the hcf of p and q should be one right so let us now understand what a number line is and how do we represent rational numbers most of you but I've all already represented integers on number lines, isn't it? So you take a number line, you take a line basically and put a zero somewhere and then you divide the line into uh, equal uh, parts, right? So I have shown here, this is point one, this, this point represents one. So every point on the number line represents a number. What type of number we are going to study in detail any which, any which way, right? So right now I have represented zero, one, two, three and minus one, minus two, minus three. On the number line so one point to be noticed here is the gap between the two consecutive integers is always the same that's what is the key key thing in this number line isn't it now obviously we cannot show all the numbers on the number line because it's infinitely many so hence we have represented only a few now let us say if I have to represent 1 upon 2 is it a rational number definitely it's a fraction it's a rational number and even by the definition of a rational number, you can see 1 and 2 are integers, 2 is not equal to 0, and GCD or HCF of 1 and 2 is 1. So, by definition, 1 by 2 is a rational number, and it is very reasonable also to, you know, uh, you know that half is nothing but 50% of something rational number. It is a very much reasonable number, half. But where does it lie, right? So, half you know is less than 1, but greater than 0, isn't it? So definitely half is more than nothing, but definitely less than the full, right? So that means, logically speaking, the position of half must be somewhere between 0 and 1. But there are infinitely many positions between 0 and 1. So where in where exactly? So as the number suggests itself, it is half, that is exactly half of 1. So hence it is logical or reasonable to make a point or find a point exactly in the middle of middle of uh, 0 and 1 and say that this is half isn't it so basically if you notice what did we do so see the number the denominator now so the denominator is what is the denominator here denominator is 2 so basically what i did is i divided between the 0 and 1 into two parts and the first part wherever it ends is my 1 by 2 let us understand another take another example let us say we say 5 upon 3 so I have to represent 5 upon 3 on the number line. What is 5 upon 3? So if you notice, it is nothing but it is 1 whole 2 upon 3. I understand that or I assume that you know how to reduce a fraction into a mixed fraction, right? And vice versa. So it is a mixed fraction. It is a 1 whole 2 upon 3. That means 1 full and then 2 upon 3. That means clearly this number is greater than 1. Isn't it? It is more than 1 because 1 and 2 thirds or something. And definitely this number is also less than 2. Isn't it? So hence, intuition says it is somewhere in this part. Somewhere in this part. But where? So if you see, again take the denominator. So denominator is 3. So let us take the denominator and divide the number one between other uh, the length one between the one and two right so first of all ascertain the lower lower limit so it is between one definitely and two so this number lies between one and two so take that segment one and two i have highlighted there now divide this 
in how many parts denominator how many denominator parts are there three so one so now if you see there are three parts now and then second part of this wherever it ends so second part is this so this point represents five one two one whole two upon three or five by three isn't it let's take another number let's take um something between two and three right or let us say we we are now take decimal number so let us say we take two point say two okay so what is it basically if you see 2.2 .2 is nothing but you must have studied before so 2.2 .2 can be repre represented as 22 by 10 is it just put a 10 so 22 divided by 10 is 2.2 .2. Now is this a fraction number no but it can be reduced to when it is 11 upon 5 if you cancel 2 from numerator and denominator you'll get 11 upon 5 which is nothing but 1 sorry not 1 it is 2 whole 1 upon 5 isn't it so I, if you noticed i converted 2.2 into a fra fraction and then into a mixed fraction so 2 whole 1 upon 5 that means this number is greater than 2 clearly no problem and it is also less than 3 right so the number is between 2 and 3 so that means i have to divide 2 and 3 but to uh, between uh, the gap between 2 and 3 but in how many parts again i said look for the denominator five parts so let us divide this into five parts so five parts means i have to put four points one two three and four right so it might not look like equal parts but that's what i mean so i have divided into five equal parts and then I have to take the first out of this first, isn't it? First part. So first part ends here. So I encircle that. So this point, my dear friends, this point represents two whole one upon five, which is equal to eleven upon five, which is equal to two point two. Right. Similarly, you can do all this for negative numbers as well. We can take one example. For example, let me say I am taking a number minus 2.2. Let us say the same number minus 2.2. Right. So it is somewhere between minus 3 and minus 2, isn't it? And uh, so hence, what will be uh, and where, how to locate it? So it is simply, it is simply minus 22 by 10, which is equal to minus 11 by five right so hence you will do what whatever you did on the right hand side you will do the same thing but here you will start counting from the upper limit here what does it mean let me show you so again you have to divide this into five parts one two three and four right so hence it is nothing but minus two one upon five so five parts i have divided and first right so now i will take from here from the right hand side not from the left hand side because it is a negative number right so this number is minus 11 upon 5 or minus 2.2 2, right well again i'm repeating i'm not taking from there i'm not taking this as you know unlike this case we had taken just next to 2 here also just next to minus 2 right so i'll start from minus 2 only but in the left direction here i started from 2 but in the right direction this is happening because i am taking a negative number i am representing a negative number on the number line so now i think you understood how to represent numbers on a number line we'll take problem solving sessions where it will be more clear you can look for those sessions there in the playlist and try and understand how the problems are being solved thank you